Hi there everyone, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Margaret Somerville and like Ian, I'm, uh, I'm from Britain, although I'm from the better part up north. Um, and I was, uh, I was used to going to folk clubs in Britain and uh, they were always good fun, both socially and, and musically. So when I came to Canada in 1978, I came for two years <laughs> to go to school and uh, at some point in these two years, I met Tim, um, who fortuitously was also uh, interested in folk music. And uh, when I moved to Ottawa in 1981, um, we went along to, I think, most of the concerts that Ian was talking about, including the first one with him and Terry in the fire hall. So uh, we have quite a background in, uh, in Ian's concerts and Ian and Gore's concerts. And Tim and I were uh, two of the people who uh, responded to the, to the call in 1983. And uh, here we are almost 40 years later. So um, <clears throat> like Ian said, we uh, divided jobs up um, during that meeting and uh, one of the things that Tim and I uh, offered to do was come up with a logo. And this was, uh, this was meant to be part of our branding exercise where uh, we'd make uh, posters and newsletters and people would start to hopefully start to recognize our logo and recognize our name and know that um, if they came to an old sod concert, it would be a certain quality. So even if they didn't know the people that we were presenting, they would come along just because it was our, our concerts. Um, so in keeping with uh, the name of the society, the Old Sod Society, we thought, well, the logo should um, indicate that we're an organization that does traditionally based music rather than contemporary singer-songwriter type folk music. So we were looking for ideas and we were leafing through uh, the album collection and we came uh, upon uh, an album by John Kirkpatrick and Sue Harris and the name of the album was Among the Many Attractions at the Show Will Be a Really High Class Band and this was a graphic that was on the album cover. <laughs> and, uh, we looked at this and we thought, wow, there's a pretty good fit. It's definitely from the old country. <laughs> And uh, it's got a lot of acoustic instruments in there, so it seemed to fit the bill. And as a bonus, just like Ian said, old sod means something else in Britain. Um, it's a mildly offensive term, <laughs> <laughs> um, which means uh, a person of dubious character. Um, but it was a bonus that it actually looked like an old sod as well. So, um, this uh, drawing was adapted, it was simplified a bit so that we could uh, reduce it to appear on newsletters and stuff. And uh, the, the logo was born. Um, and I should say that um, I didn't steal it exactly, it was certainly adapted. <laughs> Stealing is such a dog whistle word these days. Um, but uh, the actual drawing didn't have uh, any attribution on the original album, so I think it may actually have been adapted from somewhere else. So, so I like to think of the old sod logo as uh, the folk process in action. So um, that's the logo and I, I'm also going to talk about the newsletter. Um, to start with, um, Ivan and Nancy were actually uh, in charge of producing the newsletter um, for the first couple of years and after that uh, I took it on. And this was in the early to mid 80s. This, like Ian said, it was pre-internet, pre-email. So a mail newsletter, as well as uh, posters stuck on lamp posts and the odd mention on uh, local media was the way that we got the word out about concerts. Um, so like I said, it was Ivan and Nancy that were putting it together uh, to start with. And I think I probably took over in 85, perhaps. And this, uh, this kind of came became my job <laughs> for the rest of the time that the newsletter was actually produced. And I think the last one was produced in 1999. So I wrote a lot of newsletters. <laughs> um, in the early 80s, word processing, uh, most of you are of an age that you will remember it vaguely, 
Um, in the early 80s, word processing programs were very basic. They were pretty much text only. Um, you couldn't format very well. You could indent paragraphs. Um, and changing uh, typefaces or even changing sizes, you had to do with a complicated combination of keys. There was no fancy stuff like graphical user interfaces. So putting a newsletter together was uh, a little challenging in terms of the technology. Um, and really the layout of the newsletter was done using cut and paste, but really it was physical scissors and physical glue. <laughs> um, and what we do for the early newsletters was we'd cut out uh, the photographs, the publicity photographs that bands would send around and I'd write up a little thing and I'd lay it out on a page and then fill in any uh, gaps with hand-drawn hand -drawn drawings or uh, bits that I cut out of somewhere else. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of a laborious process. Um, and it wasn't until probably the late 80s or early 90s that word processing programs became a little bit more sophisticated. And we actually had formatting so that, you know, what you see is what you get type formatting. So you could put some, something up on the screen and you knew that's what was going to print out. Um, and you could also put things like graphics and photographs and text all on the same screen. <laughs> so it, was, uh, it made it a little easier and also made it look uh, a little bit more professional. The early, early ones were folksy, shall we say. <laughs> um, and over the years, the name of the newsletter actually changed from the Old Star Folk Music Society newsletter to something much snappier. It became Focus. <laughs> Um, so we had, as you can see from the calendar on the screen there, we had one and sometimes two concerts a month and uh, as of the 90s we started having a dance a month as well. So there was quite a lot, a lot of stuff going on. So it meant that we had to produce a newsletter fairly frequently so that uh, we could let people know what was going on. So they didn't have to remember for six months what, what it was. So we put this out every, uh, every two months and we probably produced about anywhere from 100 to 130 every time. And uh, we'd have folding parties after the newsletter was produced where there would be a bunch of us get together and we'd collate the pages, we'd staple them together, they'd, we'd fold it up into a letter size package and stick it together with a mailing uh, label. So this was a quite a labor intensive uh, evening. It took, usually took several people a couple of hours to do it. Um, however, I do remember the, the folding parties as being great fun and uh, usually fueled by Catherine's brains or similar types goodies, type of goodies. So some things don't change. Um, yeah, so the, the uh, newsletter, as well as promoting old sod stuff, I think it's important to say that we also promoted a lot of other folk music and dance in town. Um, we would promote the GCTC Acoustic Wave series, uh, all the Rasputin uh, jams and concerts. We'd, uh, we'd list when the various dances were happening for Scottish, English and international dancing. So we were, we were really part of the wider uh, wider community and I think we helped build the, uh, the folk music uh, community in Ottawa. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Tim now and he's going to talk about some of the other hoops we had to, to uh, jump through. 